Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Great and faithful is the Holy One of Israel, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Great is our God. He is great and greatly to be praised. Abba Father, you reign. You reign, O King Jesus, you reign. Reign in our situations and circumstances. Reign, O Holy One of Israel, reign. Reign, Lion of the tribe of Judah, reign. Reign, O Rose of Sharon, reign. Reign, Abba Father, reign. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our hearts we raise. You are awesome in this place. Almighty God, reign, King Jesus, reign. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah to the King of kings and Lord of lords. How excellent is our God, how excellent you are, O Holy One of Israel. You are awesome in this place, Almighty God. You are worthy of all praise. To you, our hearts we raise. Thou art awesome in this place, Almighty, Almighty, Almighty God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord with all my soul, with all my soul. I worship his holy name. I sing like never before. With all my soul, I worship his holy name. I bless you, Lord, with all my soul. With all my soul, I worship your holy name. I sing like never before. With all my soul, I worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. Jesus, I worship your holy name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Forever, all our days. Hallelujah, hallelujah, our God reigns, hallelujah, Jesus reigns, hallelujah, Jesus reigns, forever all our days, hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is worthy. He is awesome. He is wonderful. He is mighty. He is great and greatly to be praised. Abba Father reigns. He reigns. Jehovah reigns. Yeshua reigns. Our God reigns. Forever all our days. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is the 20th of December, five days from the day when people celebrate Christmas Day, celebrate Christ must be in mass in all homes and families and hearts. It's the day when they celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one true and living God the one who is worthy to be praised and adored. Ah, and so it's the time of family, the time of love, the time of celebration, the time of gifts. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so, hallelujah, I, uh, I empathize with the people who spend more focus on more time focusing on the, the frills and the glitz and the glamour. I guess that's one of the many reasons why I am not uh, a Christmas person of such. I am a Christmas person, but I'm not. So I don't, I don't celebrate the season. I celebrate the people. I don't celebrate the season. I celebrate 
the one who uh, stimulates the celebration of the season. And so there is no season called Christmas, but there is a celebration for the birth of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so I don't want to rain on anybody's parade because I do get involved. I sing the Christmas carols. I give gifts. I, I love upon people. I like to go and eat with persons. And so people might say, um, how you say you don't celebrate Christmas, but then you do all these things. Right. I don't celebrate the the the, 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 the things that persons celebrate. So you won't see lights and trees and gifts on the trees and that kind of, 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 of thing because that's not that has nothing to do with the birth of Christ um, just yesterday Pastor Marshall was telling me about a church where there was a huge tree in the church a huge tree with lots of um, stuff on the trees and I, on the tree and I'm saying to myself that's what I don't do that's what I don't that's not a part of celebrating the birth of Christ that part is the paganism that part is the part that i don't believe this is my opinion and everyone is free to disagree that's the part i don't believe is a reflection of the birth of jesus that tree in the church um and even in the home but that's individual everyone can do what they want in their home but the church represents the body of christ represents the kingdom represents the people not just one person and one person's opinion no man owns the church god owns the church amen and so um the truth is i don't believe in that overindulgence of this huge tree and these all these things that represents paganism that represents idolatry that's my opinion you can disagree you are free to disagree we love each other same way even in disagreement but i believe that if you think about it think about it seriously the, the the love and the sharing and even the carols and the gifts and the hugging and the eating and and the celebration and just believing that jesus christ that um was born for us to to live that we might have life and life more abundantly and all these things all of that is nice but what's the purpose of the tree what's the significance of the tree how does the tree and, and and what it means and everybody looking and saying wow is that a form of idolatry is that a form of worship seeing the tree big in the church where everyone can see it and everyone can admire it is that a form of idolatry think about it people of god god has given us ability to think to process to to, to wonder why is this so preeminent why is this so dominant why is this so evident why is there a tree ever in a church or in a space or in a house that is unnoticed is an idolatry the noticing of one thing as opposed to another drawing attention from one thing to another come on so i'm just saying to you while i my my job is not to as i said rain on anyone's parade or try to convince anyone otherwise that's not my thing i'm just saying as believers we must think as believers we must understand as believers we must know and make a choice once we've made that choice that choice is yours you know once you have made that choice that choice is yours and i cannot say or do anything against your choice your choice is your choice but my choice is to educate you so that men does not deceive you on Sunday, Monday evening, we were doing 1 Timothy chapter 4, and it spoke about deceiving spirits. 1 Timothy chapter 4 spoke about deceptive spirits, how to identify. As a matter of fact, glory to God. Let me let me just find and just uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. Here it is. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Can I read 1 Timothy chapter 4 for you? Hallelujah. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Good morning, Holy Spirit of God, and welcome. Welcome into our presence. Welcome into our day. Welcome into our way. Father, I only want to honor and glorify you. I only want your will to be done in the hearts of your people. I wish not for any person to be deceived and to be drawn away by their own lust or by ignorance. I just want the truth to go forward and let your people make a conscious decision from the perspective of truth truth from the innermost part truth that does not uh, abuse grace that does not abuse freedom 
but truth that is managed by grace and managed by freedom amen praise god thank you holy spirit thank you lord and so um first timothy chapter 4 verse 1 says the spirit clearly says that in latter days in latter days as in now compared to when it was written some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits some will abandon the faith the faith in jesus the faith that jesus christ alone must be preeminent must be big must be large must take up the space that is considered the holies of holies the church inside the church is considered the holies of holies when the the, the high priest in the olden days went into the courtyard of the of the synagogue uh, they were in the outer court then they went into the inner court then they went into the holies of holies that's the place where god is that that's the place where he alone um, operates he alone uh, functions he alone is god nothing else is in there that will draw our eyes or our attention or our hearts or our admiration away from him and so i'm saying to you this is my opinion when you put a massive or even a small christmas tree for what it represents inside the sanctuary you there is not one child or even adult that will go in and let me not say that let me say that there are some persons who will go because even i who don't believe that this is right that this is um biblical or christian um when i go in i may not honor it or i may not think it's important or even like that it is there but i still see it i still see it and the more elaborate it is is the more my attention is drawn to it even though i don't believe in it so i could say no one comes in and not see it notice it or um maybe admire or even speak negatively towards it but i won't say that because i don't know that for a fact but i would say and i think you would back me on this majority of people who come into a synagogue into a church into a, a building and sees a huge or even a small christmas tree lit up and nicely decorated and stuff they notice it their eyes are drawn to it and it it, it become a focal point now when a pastor puts a huge one maybe on the pulpit or um on the stage sorry or in the in the in the corner where it is noticeable from the back to the front of the church people keep looking at it and if they love christmas and love the christmas tree issue um the, the church become a center for that distraction and church is not supposed to become a center of distraction from the word from what the pastor is saying or from god himself church is supposed to be a focus a place of central focus on who jesus is and i'm here to tell you today that i will challenge any human being that live any human being that live that tries to tell me that the tree in the church is a is a symbol of jesus's birth i will challenge you and i'll tell you that you have been lied to this the the, the spirit has deceived you and you have abandoned the faith and followed and you're following deceiving spirits can you put up tree in your own house if you so choose of course put the tree in your house pastor put the tree in your house man of god put the tree in your house woman of god that's your personal space that's your belief system that's your faith go ahead it's okay that's fine i have no issue i will not tell you you cannot put a tree in your house but to put a tree in god's house to put a tree in god's house and the tree is not directly proportional to your even your celebration of the birth of jesus hmm, that's where the issue is and so at the expense of some fourth watch persons maybe even feeling upset with me maybe even um be, be, be angry or cross or miserable i have to tell you the truth be mindful and careful of pastors of leaders who come to you on the pulpit and tell you oh christmas is my favorite time of the year and christmas is this and christmas is that and we celebrate christmas and we want to put that you're not celebrating christmas you're celebrating the pagan holiday of idol worship that's what you're celebrating christmas can be celebrated in church how watch this christmas message about the birth of jesus love 
gift giving to children and to adults if you can afford it that that kind of thing there um a feast a celebration but a direct focus on only jesus not the issues and the situations and the so why does the church need lights on the inside blinking lights and reindeer and and, and uh, why to what end that is not what was around when jesus was born there was no christmas tree inside the manger none none whatsoever there were no trees with lights and these things on it if you look where you see that and i won't go into that if you look where you see that in the bible you'll see that it was negated it was spoken against and it was declared as idolatry so what people do in their personal space is fine because every man has to work out his own salvation with fear and trembling and as i say again let it not be said that i am condemning or judging people who want to do what they do personally i choose not to that's my right you choose to that's your right but when it comes to the house of god the house of god is a house of prayer a house of righteousness a house of holiness a house of truth and a christmas tree in a church does not represent any of those things it is partially what jesus made the whip of cord and whipped the people out of the church for and so i will forever disagree i, I will forever think that it is sacrilegious it is contaminating and it is disrespectful to the presence and the lordship of jesus christ to put a small or a big christmas tree inside the sanctuary of righteousness holiness and truth because it does not in any way represent God. No way, shape, or form does it represent God, the tree itself. Amen? So that's that's the that's the position. But um the scripture tells you that we will abandon the faith and we will follow deceiving spirits. Spirits that tells us, hey guys, it's okay to bring Christmas um it, it, it's it's frills and celebrations and all these things into the church. It is okay to bring love, which is part of what Christmas represents, gift giving, helping the poor, making sure that the poor and the needy get a, get a meal, making sure that you do some greater levels of, of, of altruistic service at that time or at this time, because in one respect, it is celebrating that Jesus was born as a gift from God to us. Fine, no issue. So let me be very clear. I'm saying it again like a scratch record because I don't want persons to think that I am uh, <laughs> um, whatever. But I still have to speak the truth. And so it may swallow hard this morning. It may be difficult. You may say, Pastor, why are you just so on this? I'm on this because too many of our leaders, too many of our church leaders who are influencers, hallelujah cousin monique it's so good to see you cuz hallelujah hallelujah jesus i'm so glad to see you hallelujah praise god love you cuz hallelujah so 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 he's saying that anything that does not represent in this uh, first timothy 4 passage anything that doesn't represent the authentic manifestation of the will and the purpose of jesus christ righteousness holiness and truth joy in the holy ghost um worship obedience to the absolute of absolute obedience to the word that is absolute anything that deviates from that anything that goes in a different direction is a result of us abandoning the faith and following deceiving spirits so if you buy into the fact that you, your pastor is allowed to put up a giant tree, Christmas tree, in church that has no bearing and no significance uh, of, of Jesus Christ and him crucified or him birth, but is a distraction and people keep looking at it, it distracts from the worship, it distracts from the word, and depending on how pretty it is, or even if it is not pretty at all, it still will distract. Jer yes, Jeremiah says it is vain. I agree but I, I don't even want to go into a full teaching I just want to bring a level of exposure to all of us whether we believe in Christmas or not whether we believe in the Christmas celebration or not remember I believe in the celebration of the birth of Christ what I don't believe in 
is the pagan element that has come to contaminate the celebration of the birth of Christ. And too many of us have, as believers have focused on the area of contamination instead of the area of manifestation. The manifestation of Jesus Christ of Nazareth supersedes, exceeds, come on, and excludes all the frills. Why don't we have cows and goats and sheep and all the animals that were in the the, the, the um in the in the manger? Why don't we have those in the church during this time? Why don't we dress them up in fancy clothes and red and white and put lights around them and have them moo in the in the in the church? Because they would be they would more represent the con the, the atmosphere, the environment that Jesus was born in. That would more represent that atmosphere. And we could say, yes, we celebrate Christmas with the animals that Jesus was born beside and around. Why not do that? Why do we take something that even the Bible in Jeremiah calls vain, calls pagan, calls idolatry, and we take that and bring to represent the symbol of Jesus' birth? People of God, think. Don't let your emotions, don't let how you were brought up, don't let what you were exposed to as a child, and certainly don't let what your pastor tried to push down your throat, your throat become the center of your celebration of Jesus because it has nothing to do with him, nothing whatsoever. So find the balance, still celebrate, still buy your gifts, still give food to the homeless, still give um, opportunity for persons to be blessed, still, you know, say Merry Christmas. Yeah, I'm not even taking that from you. But there are some things that has no significance at all. And that is how the deceptive spirit sneaks in. He sneaks in and let the focus be more about the gifts, more about the food, more about the tree, more about the gifts under the tree, more about the, the, the other thing, more about money and the money making thing. He makes it more about that and less about Jesus. Notice that some of us who are old enough to understand when we were younger, 20, 30, 40 years ago, it used to be Merry Christmas across the board in every country except those that don't believe in Jesus. Merry Christmas. Now it's Merry, then it, we went to Merry Xmas because they were trying to X out Jesus. Not the celebrations, not the tree. Nobody has ever said, let's not have any tree anymore. Let's not have any gifts anymore. Let's not eat um, ex extensive food and ham and these things and eggnog. No one has said that, but they have said, X out Christ. And so they started by Xing out. Come on, people of God, let's be, let's be, let's be honest at least. Even if you choose to continue, despite what I say, let it be from a place of decision, not from a place of ignorance. They have sought to X out Christ. And so you started to hear Merry Xmas, Merry Xmas, because they couldn't say Christ. They couldn't say Christmas because it represents Christ. So they started to X that out. Then it got a few years later, as I became an adult, I started to hear Happy Holidays. They couldn't even say Xmas. Because it still psychologically sent a message to say Christ Mass, Christmas. So it was still representing too close to Jesus. So they started to say happy holidays because people would um, uh, violently be opposed to anything that even remotely connects to Jesus. And so it happy holidays became the order of the day. But no one ever took out trees. They never violently protested against the tree, the Christmas trees or whatever. Just that which represents Jesus. And we sit idly by as believers, as people who are bought with a price of Jesus. And we say it's okay, not, not, not by our mouth, but by our involvement, by our actions. We say it's okay for the world to X out Jesus and we still participate in what they have left for us to participate in. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar, people of God. And so I'm sorry I took up so much of your time this morning to just explain and to express my personal view. Um, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, it's one of the things, uh, one of the benefits that I get from being in this chair and being able to speak to you. But I speak not from the perspective of what I like or don't like, but from the perspective of the word. And the word says, um, not only will we 
abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and, um, and the things taught by demons. The word says, and the things taught by demons. Demons teach us to, to, to worship um, inanimate objects. Demons teach us to embrace idolatry. <coughs> Excuse me. Embrace idolatry even for a moment, for a season. We embrace idolatry and um, and we think that it's okay because come January 1 or 2 or 3 or 5, we pull down the tree and it's gone. And our time of idolatry, our time of idol worship is gone and it's okay. It's not okay. It's not okay because it is things taught by demons. He said, the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 2, such teachings come from hypocritical liars. Hypocritical liars. What does that mean? Hypocrites. Those who say one thing and believe another. Those who say that Jesus Christ of Nazareth is their Lord and they're committed to following him and everything that he says, which is what is in the Bible. But yet they do otherwise. Yet they say otherwise. So they celebrate Christmas even though God is against Christmas in the Bible in the way that it is celebrated. Amen? That's hypocrite. So there are hypocritical liars. And a hypocrite is usually a liar. Because if you say one thing and live another, or if you say one thing and do another, that's a hypocrite and that is also a liar. Amen? And he says, whose consciences, whose consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. Their consciences have been seared as with a hot iron. And so even when the facts of the scriptures, the facts of God's heart comes and says, listen, this man, I'm not in that. You, you should not be in that. They still say, I don't care what anyone say. I am putting up a big Christmas tree in my church. I am putting it, fill it with lights. And I'm going to cause my people to gawk and awe and celebrate and clap and sing Christmas carols around the song, around the tree and look at the tree and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, because if I say that act is not idol worship, then it isn't. But if God says it is, I still say it isn't. And so for this time of celebration and what we do, it is what I say that goes, not what God says. Are you a follower of man or a follower of God? Have you been one of those who abandon the faith and run blindly after deceiving spirits taught by demons? You have to ask yourself the question, Will you be able to answer that question if Jesus asked it on judgment day like I'm asking it now? Or will you say, Lord, I didn't know. I didn't know. No one taught me. No one told me. From I was a little child, I grew up in a house that had Christmas tree and gifts under the tree and talk about Mary's boy child, Jesus Christ, was born on Christmas day. And so that's all I know. And he's going to play back the tape and he's going to say, okay, so that's all you knew as a child, as a young adult. But as an adult, I place you in a position, in a, in, a, in a devotional family called Fourth Watch. Can you remember? Can I play back this tape and let you hear what my son was telling you from my heart? That you must be careful of idolatry, even as it, it creeps in subtly and draws your attention, as it creeps in and contaminates my sanctuary. Did you hear my son tell you on my behalf? Or didn't you? You chose, you heard, but you chose otherwise. You chose to follow how you were brought up. For yet you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but you chose to continue in that iniquity as a conscience seared. But don't tell me you didn't know. You knew because I made sure that you heard what my son had to say by my spirit. He who have ears to hear, let him hear. Please, I beg of you, no condemnation. I hope you notice I'm not angry. I, am, I have made my position clear. I am just giving you information, not instruction. Information. Come on. Not for condemnation, but for consideration. Wow, that sounds cute. I wasn't even trying. Praise God. Hallelujah. Information, not instruction. Come on. For consideration not for condemnation. So do what you must according to your own free will, 
and free decision. But know that God will either say, Well done, good and faithful servant, on that blessed day. Or he will say, Why did you embrace idolatry, pagan worship, for so many years despite what you heard? What will your answer be? My pastor made me do it. My mother and father made me do it. What will your answer be, people of God? You better have an answer. You better have an answer for what you worship, for who you worship, for how you worship, for where you worship, for when you worship, for why you worship. You better have an answer. Let that answer be according to the righteousness, holiness, and truth of God, of the word, of his will, and of his presence. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 If anyone was offend, offended, if you feel a little tinge in your stomach and you, you think that I was messing with your thing, I'm sorry. That was not my intent. My intent was to inform, not to condemn. Amen. I hope that you receive it as such. And I hope that you still love me because I still love you. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. So that's, I, I hope by God's grace, I hope by God's grace, that is my final say on this whole Christmas celebration thing and the, 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 um, the pagan way that it is gone about. Please, as I said, love upon people more, much more in this. Ah, uh, thank you, Sister Mark. Praise God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you, Charlene. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know I don't mean any harm to any Fourth Watch family member. To no one, period. But especially to you guys. You guys are so special to me. I cannot tell you enough. I don't even want to start saying how special you are because then I'm going to get teary-eyed. And some of you know that I'm a softy when it comes to the people that I love so much. I love you guys. And I know sometimes God uses me to say some things that are tough, that are hard, that hits in the ribs, that hits in the jaw. And I feel it too. Because I never want to say anything that hurts you. But this is not that kind. Your pastor may soften. Your pastor may soften things. So that you feel comfortable and nice all the time. Your pastor may come to church with Johnson baby powder. And put on your chest. And on your back. And on your belly. And you feel good all the time. Even when you are dirty. Because powder should not go on an unbathed body. Are you hearing me? Listen to the analogy. Powder should not be put on a baby that has not yet been bath, bath, has not yet had its bath. Are you hearing me? If you have not, the baby has pooed and poo is still, residue of poo is still all over them. That's not when you put powder on the baby. You put powder on the baby after they have been washed. Amen. And so there are some of us leaders, like politicians, like some pastors, like some parents, who put powder on an unclean child. A child that has not been washed, a child that has not repented, a, a child that has not turned from their evil ways, a child that is still embracing certain kinds of sin, idolatry, lust, pride, greed, sexual immorality, gossiping, lying, slothfulness, all these things we're embracing, but yet our leaders the ones who are supposed to set us straight are putting powder, powder with words. Oh, you'll be all right. In the right time, God will take care of it. Don't worry about it. Grace is available for you, even though your sin abounds, even though your conscience is operating as seared. It's okay. You'll be all right. Jesus loves you. You're going to go to heaven anyway, regardless of what you do. That's putting powder on a dirty body. We do not put powder on dirty babies, people of God. Jesus' blood is there to wash every believing baby. Every believing baby, Jesus' blood, Jesus' grace, Jesus' mercy, Jesus' joy and peace is there to wash every believing baby so that the powder of the word, the powder of what is righteous, holy, and truth can be placed on us that we might go before him smelling good, smelling good as we should, smelling nice. Have you ever smelt a baby who has just been powdered? Oh God, has just had its bath and just been powdered and you lift up that baby. Baby. Oh, 
God, you just want to hold him or her. And he says, mm. oh. and he just, that's how, oh God, come on, Holy Ghost, I feel the presence of God. That's how Jesus wants to hold us. But if there is a stench of a sin or of idolatry or of wickedness or of adultery, of fornication, of lying, of cheating, of wrong thoughts, of wrong attitude, wrong behavior, if a stench is coming from us and we have not gone to get cleaned up, we have not gone to get a bath, then, then when the powder goes on, the stench and plus the powder will conflict will contradict and a worse stench will come from our lives and because powder is on us we think we're okay but i'm telling you the only way to be okay is to be washed in the blood of yeshua only yeshua's blood can make us okay only repentance sincerely and turning from our wicked evil ways from our contaminated ways from our iniquitous ways from our ways that is controlled by a conscience seared like hot iron only turning from that way can make us clean and prepared for the powder of the word, the powder of his love, the powder of his spirit, the powder that makes us a sweet incense in his nostril. Is somebody hearing me this morning? So let us be aware of what is expected of us. Jump in the shower of his blood. Jump in the shower of the water of his word and be washed so that when the powder comes, we feel cool, look cool. And we can be in his arms as a sweet incense in his nostril. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What a celebration. What a celebration. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We adore you. I thank you for these, your people that have gathered here, oh God. I thank you for your family. I thank you for your blessing and your favor upon each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God Almighty, that even those who are a little um, tight this morning, who, 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 who are not even hearing anything else this morning because they vehemently disagree with the position that you have sent forth. Hallelujah. I thank you, O God Almighty, gracious, wonderful, and sovereign God, that no weapon formed against our minds shall prosper, and every tongue that rises against us in judgment is condemned and destroyed by fire. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I bless you this day, O Lord Jesus. I thank you for revelation, for manifestation, for information. For confirmation i thank you lord god almighty that every member of this family shall be a member who is deeply rooted in your will and in your purpose in your word for your for your name's sake and for your righteousness sake i thank you O gracious wonderful and sovereign god that nothing that the enemy desires to do will lead us away from the faith and cause us to follow deceiving spirits or doctrines taught by devils or devil's doctrines taught by even righteous holy men and women of god i thank you father that we will not be corrupted or contaminated but we will be steadfast immovable focused only on you and what you say we can focus on in the mighty name of jesus christ i cut loose from every fourth watch family member and their families oh god almighty every contamination every deceiving every deceiving spirit every familiar spirit teaching that has hit our spirits i don't care who it was taught by because some foremost prophets some foremost apostles some foremost pastors some foremost politicians some foremost influence fathers and mothers have sought to taught uh, to teach deceiving from a deceptive space from a, 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 a an idolatrous place and, and think that because of their reputation, because of their history, because of their influence, that that makes it okay. Father, I uproot that deception from the minds and hearts of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. We will only believe your word. We will only believe what you say. Paul said, if any man anyone even an angel should teach anything but jesus christ and him crucified may they be accursed father i don't care how powerful how special how anointed how in your presence any man of God or woman of God is if they teach idolatry in a subtle way uh, to your people may they may 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 
Jesus. May it be cancelled from the heart of your people. May it be uprooted from the hearts of your people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. May the wisdom of God fall upon your people, O Lord Jesus Christ, that they will know that while they, 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 this is just a moment like the moment you had with Peter, hallelujah, where Peter said something that was uh, of, of a demonic doctrine and you cursed the demonic spirit that was trying to take him over and speak through him but you never discarded him you never disparaged him you never condemned him you kept him close but you chased away the demon father i chase away every demon of tree worship every demon of idolatry every demon of pagan systems every demon of running after shopping and 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 and, and things of the flesh uh, God as a God hallelujah but it must be as a benefit of your blessing of, for, of, of, of of seeking first your kingdom that you bless your people to be a blessing to their family and to their neighbors and to the poor and the homeless may that be the focus oh God Almighty may none become depressed because they don't have a husband or a wife or money to do things in the season where other people are doing things may none become depressed because of the the, 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 the lights and the glitz and the glamour that exist in our atmosphere may none of your people become sad or broken or spirit become downcast as a result of this season because that again is a reflection of the fact that this is not a true celebration of you if one feels that way when your birth only brought hope only brought celebration only brought, brought hallelujah persons that were out in the cold hallelujah out in the wilderness like the sheep the shepherds that were sent like the, the wise men that came from far because of the glory because of the excitement so they came bearing gifts but only because of you you are the center not a tree you Lord Jesus are the center and so I declare this morning Lord that you are the center of every fourth watch family members life you are the center you are the only tree that is planted in us and we in you you have planted us like a palm tree in your courtyard and we will not be distracted by lights and th and things all over us but we will be focused steadfast immovable looking to you that we will be radiant and our faces will never be covered with shame may your glory fall afresh upon us today and every day in every way in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth blessed be the name of the lord jesus christ may you remain preeminent may you remain dominant may you remain powerful awesome sovereign and true in every part of our lives and of our families in the mighty name of jesus christ father i bless every family in this season i bless every member of this family and every member of their families in this season i speak health and strength prosperity and good success in the mighty name of jesus christ i prophesy that no untimely death shall come to your household in this season in the name of jesus christ i declare that you shall not go hungry in this season in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare that you shall be blessed to be a blessing in this season in the name of jesus christ that you shall not be discouraged or dissuaded or or, or disappointed in this season in the mighty name of jesus christ i declare that your household shall be blessed with abundance overflowing in the mighty name of jesus christ that as you focus on the righteousness holiness and truth of god and of his word that god shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory that even with only only a few days left not for christmas but for this year to end i thank you that you shall end well that you shall have sweatless victories in the mighty name of jesus christ come on people of god say i receive it i receive it i release sweatless victories i release uh favor with every area of your life favor with things that you didn't know you should have as favor favor with things that you thought you would have gotten in january i bring it into december in the name of jesus christ favor with your paperwork come on hallelujah favor with your documents favor with your children going to certain types of school favor with your children passing exams favor with your with, with, with your with your job hallelujah favor 
hallelujah, favor from God and man. I speak favor over your life now in the name of Jesus. Come on, receive it. Uh, receive it in the name of Jesus. I speak favor to your just born child. I speak favor to your unborn child. I speak favor to your child that is about to be placed in your womb, even in this season. Hallelujah. For December, babies are born in September. I declare that those of you married women that have been seeking to have a child next September, next September, next September. Remember this day in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Next September, you shall give birth. And those of you who have been seeking to give birth to a ministry, birth to a business, birth to whatever, I declare that 2024 shall be the year when you shall see birthings, birthings of business, birthings of, of a deeper relationship with God, birthings of a deeper birthing of a deeper relationship with your, your your family members with your spouse birthing of a deeper more intimate more loving more more sacrificial relationship with others in the mighty name of Jesus Christ ah uh, yes Alafia this is your day girl this is your day we're believing God that next September next September will be a time to remember in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I'm not saying thus saith the Lord, but there are two kinds of prophecy. There's a prophecy that you're believing God for, that you're saying, Father, as your son, I'm speaking this and, de and desiring that you will back it. And there's a thing that God says. So God could say to me, tell Alafia that next September she will have a baby. Or God can say, because you are my son, you will speak a word and because it doesn't go against the principle and the process of my word i will cause it to happen you shall decree a thing and it shall be established so i'm not saying thus said the lord you or anyone else will have a baby in september that's not what i've heard in my spirit i've heard in my spirit just speak a word over god's people in love and by faith I shall cause it to come to pass in the name of Jesus. So I'm saying to you, married folks that are on here, young married folks that are in this family that have been trying to have a baby, come on, get cracking between now and the end of December because September shall be a month to remember in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare it. I declare it, I declare it, I decree it, and I'm believing God to seal it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I also declare and decree that next year shall be a year of either coming together, um, getting and meeting your boas or your or your or your or your Ruth and um getting engaged and even in some instances getting married because in short order God shall do a mighty work, hallelujah, in the lives of some persons who have been um saying god where is my husband where is my wife where where why am i still single why am i still single next year christmas hallelujah will not catch you single this again i am declaring as a desire of my heart i declare i call forth your boas i call forth your ruth i call forth your queen esther to come forth out of the darkness lord jesus christ of nazareth if we be your children if we be sons of the lord then we must have authority to dominate authority to take control of the atmosphere authority to call forth that which be not as though it is and so father we call forth ah deep godly relationships deep godly intimacies that are connected to you and that will be connected to the the, the, the i do vows marriage is honorable on the bed on the file i declare marriages i release marriages weddings 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 in 2024 even as i release births 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 in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i declare you blessed i declare you highly favored i declare that the birthing of god's favor come on and there's going to be birthings of of, of of documentations too birthing of other things not just birthing of husbands or wives not just birthing of weddings not just birthings of businesses but they're going to be birthings and not just birthing of babies but they are going to be birthings of promotion come on glory to god they're going to be birthings of new businesses they're going to be birthings of ministries they're going to be birthings of a new level of anointing uh, in god they're going to be birthings of a new mindset a new way of thinking a new way of living and so there's going to be a tremendous amount of birthings in this new year 2024 in the name of jesus christ and in this new season that begins 
begins today. I speak a birthing, hallelujah, of that which has been held up for you. I accelerate, I accelerate, I accelerate, I accelerate that which is yours, that which belongs to you. I accelerate your blessings. I accelerate your paperwork. I accelerate your baby coming home from the hospital in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You, you, you had a baby recently. Yes, yes, cousin. You had a baby recently and the baby is still under, under, under neonatal care. But I command an acceleration. I command in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I command an acceleration of the growth and of the strengthening and of the of the of the of this the, the cells regenerating and growing of that baby now in the name of jesus christ i declare that what the doctors expect to happen in 10 days or in two weeks will happen in two days in the mighty name of jesus christ in three days in four days in the mighty name of jesus christ that child needs to be home in his mother's care and so father god almighty i speak by your authority and your power holy spirit and i command babies that have been born that are still being in neonatal care being cared for mothers have to face expenses to go to the hospital and to breastfeed or to pump and to leave milk for the baby i command that system to cease now thank you for that in the natural but in the spirit we say baby arise arise and go arise and go in the name of jesus christ and we declare that more birthing birthing of graduations birthings of scholarships birthings of things that that, that that you desire to see come to pass birthings of new cars birthings of new jobs i declare a birthing between now and january in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i declare that when everyone else everywhere else is being shut down is is, is saying it's time for celebration nothing is happening I declare that doors shall open for you in this time when it is closing for most companies for most places for most people for most things when everyone is taking a break to celebrate family and to celebrate things I declare that the doors shall remain open for you I prophesy doors shall remain open for you to be blessed to receive things that should have been received next year or into the into into the into February January or into February or even into March I call it forth from next year into now into these next few days in the name of jesus right up to christmas eve christmas eve december 24 they're going to be working to get things done for you and right after hallelujah hallelujah after christmas eve as you go back to work i don't even have a calendar so i don't know what the days are and how the days are gonna go but i'm telling you before december you shall have miracles 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 for doors have been open and no man can shut them no season can shut them against you and so i release your documents come on i release your documents i release your documents i release your healing i release your deliverance i release your blessing i release your favor i release your spouse in the mighty name of jesus i release restoration of your children i release power of the holy spirit upon you to glorify the living god in the name of jesus christ of nazareth i prophesy that favor is the portion of every person in this family favor come on receive your favor receive your favor favor in your relationship favor favor that which hallelujah satan meant for evil that which satan meant for evil i declare the favor of god has turned it for good now 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 in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth i declare that birthing of salvation for your family members salvation for your mother salvation for your father salvation for your siblings I call it forth. I prophesy it that the new year shall not end. 2024 shall not end without your family members that you have placed before God saved. Even if God has to do a Damascus Road experience for them, I declare salvation for your family members, salvation for your children in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I declare a birthing. I hear the Lord saying, thus saith the Lord now. I hear the Lord saying, hallelujah. Jamel Gray, as I looked at you, as I looked at you, as I looked at your name just now, I hear the Lord say, tell my people that new business opportunities are going to come forth for them in this new year, 2024. New business opportunities. The Lord says, as you trust him, this is thus saith the Lord now, not me sincerely wanting something for you. This is from God, thus saith the Lord. The Lord says, hallelujah, with, with, with Jamel Gray as an example, that God says, I'm expanding, enlarging, establishing new businesses for my people, expanding existing businesses, 
business for my people if you are part of this family god says a business has been or, or, uh, earmarked for you an opportunity has been earmarked for you to grow in to expand in to enlarge in to come out of that hand to mouth to come out of that situation where you're just getting by where you're not able to do the things that you desire to do god says i have torn off those gates i have torn off every blockage and today i prophesy says the lord into your circumstance and i am opening i am expanding i am enlarging as i did for moses when i made him greater than any man as i did for solomon when i made him wiser than any man as i did for abraham when i made him wealthier than any man uh, so i am doing for you now says the lord i am showing you a territory i am showing you a land that you will dominate that you will take over that you will flourish in that you will prosper in i am releasing some of you into new places i am uprooting some of you some of you who i have told already that you are going to migrate you are going to be rooted in other places i am uprooting you now and moving you some of you i'm moving you to a different location in the same nation i am uprooting you now 2024 you will move to a new address an address that is comfortable an address that is peaceable an address that can cause you to give God glory. So I'm moving some people out of the place where they live, out of the state where they live, out of the country where they live, out of the community where they live. I am moving some people. Come on, if you are one of those that have been desirous to move, if you're one of those that have been saying, God, I need to shift address, I need to shift location. Some of you have not been saying that. Some of you are gonna get married and move to another location, get, 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 get a job and move to another location. But God says, I am shifting up this family. I'm shifting up. I'm shifting up. Ah, as you arise in me, says God, I'm shifting your circumstances. I'm shifting you. Yes, in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so I'm shifting that which concerns your children, your family. Uh, I'm shifting that which concerns you and I'm moving you to a new level and so I speak to your businesses now and I command that those that don't yet have not yet come into view I command them to come into view those that are already in view but are sputtering and, sl and, and slumbering I command them to be injected with a power of prosperity and good success in the name of Jesus Christ and those that are doing well but still can do excellent can become number one in the market I speak number one anointing upon your business now in the name of Jesus I speak expansion new levels new levels new levels new levels if you have a ministry if you have a full-time minister you're a full-time minister and you have a little church I declare it a big church I declare a new building expansion I declare people will come and get saved baptized filled with the Holy Ghost and fire that you will teach that will draw men unto the Lord as the Lord draw men and as his apostles drew men unto him so I declare the anointing of God upon you now to draw men unto the Lord in the name of Jesus I release a bigger church a bigger anointing a bigger a drawing card of the Lord manifesting in and through you in the name of Jesus Christ I declare that if you have a ministry like women without blemish like Yvonne Hay have a branch of women without blemish in Canada I declare that that branch shall begin to expand and enlarge more women more women more women more women till you need other persons to help with counseling and deliverance and all these things I declare an expansion of women without blemish and any ministry that you have that you're if you're here and you have a a prayer ministry I declare expansion if you have a counseling ministry if you have if, if whatever you do for the Lord I declare that 2024 it shall not be the same in the name of Jesus Christ whatever department you lead or department you're a part of at your church or at your workplace I declare expansion 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 in the name of Jesus come on grab it grab it by faith don't just listen grab it by faith and say yes Lord yes Lord I see that expansion I receive that expansion begin to imagine that expansion what that looks like for you in the name of Jesus Christ your business come on expansion in your interaction in things of God for next year come on hallelujah you may not be a preacher you may not be one that is up front in the ministry but you still have a role to play I declare that if you're a kingdom financer your finances shall begin to escalate shall begin to expand and enlarge in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I bless your 
finances. I bless the work of your hands that even as you have given to the house of God, I declare that next year you shall have more than enough. Money shall be falling out of your hands in great numbers that, that, that all you can hold in your hand is what can make you and your family and even your retirement comfortable. And what falls out, what is overflow, shall be for God and for the kingdom, for the poor, for the widows, for the orphans in the name of Jesus. And so I command all of what is in your account, all of what is literally in your hands to overflow, 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 that what is in your hands will be a blessing and what has falling out will be a blessing for others in the name of Jesus Christ. But know that if you are tight, if you get mean with God's blessing and begin to pick up what is on the ground that belongs to the poor and the widows and the orphans and God's kingdom and stuff in your pocket while holding what is in your hand, you will look in your hand and see that like the dog on the bridge that looked and saw his reflection and saw that the reflection had a bigger bone and dropped his and jumped in to take the bone of his of his reflection you will lose all if you want all and so have a heart to be a blessing to those say god bless me that i may be a blessing enlarge my borders indeed enlarge my territories indeed that i might be a blessing to your kingdom and to your people in the name of jesus christ of nazareth and i declare that as you come in agreement with that word release over your life this morning it shall be so as you come in agreement with your with the word of god hallelujah that has spoken over your womb spiritual womb and natural womb come in agreement come on hallelujah Come in agreement. Remember, if I spoke over your spiritual womb, then you must feed that womb with the sperm of the word, with the sperm of prayer. Come on, glory to God. If you're, if I spoke over your natural womb, then you must call your husband or call your wife and say, listen, woman of God, we got to get to work because this baby is not going to be like Mary. It's not the spirit of God that is come upon you. It's going to be your husband. And so get to work, get to work, get to work. And a chicken, you jerk. Get to work. So get to work spiritually. Come on, don't get excited and start laughing and saying, <laughs> uh, come on spiritually get to work in prayer get to work in feeding the, 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 the um your womb with the word so that you can be pregnant and give birth in the season with god's glory and if it's natural birth come on get to work get to work get to work so that there can be a seed in that womb in that uterus uh for that egg to be fertilized by so that by september next year a baby can come forth in the name of jesus christ you can't be talking about lax man leave me alone leave me alone and leave me alone or man I, I'm too tired I can't read the word come on if you want to be pregnant you got to make sure that seed is in the egg of your womb amen seed of the word seed of prayer seed of the spermatozoa come on glory to God get it in there so that God can water and increase hallelujah hallelujah so you have to do the work if you have the faith. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor you. We adore you. We magnify you. You are awesome in this place, almighty God. Whew. You have done awesomely. Oh, gracious, wonderful, and sovereign God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Come on. K. White, I see expansion for you next year as well. Expansion, expansion. I see seasons, seasons, seasons. I see God breaking up. Um, K. White, I see God breaking up. Watch God, watch God in the season. I see God breaking up um, your, 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 your life in the quarters. And God is going to bless you in quarters next year. Different things are going to happen. I see you traveling again next year. Traveling to, to, to go do some stuff and be um, in some situations that's going to make things better. But I also see your business. You know the business I'm talking about. I see that business expanding and I see an opportunity coming for another little business that God's going to bring forth for you, K. White, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, Jacqueline Brown. I just saw Jacqueline Brown's name and the Lord began to minister to me concerning Jackie Brown. Jackie, the Lord says that he's shifting your, your, your situation, that uncomfortable situation that you've been complaining to him about. God says, I'm moving some pieces. I see a chessboard in front of you, Jackie, like you're playing chess with the Lord and the Lord is not moving to try to win but he's moving to try to make you win come on somebody I see a chessboard Jackie Brown are you still there Jacqueline hallelujah 
Jacqueline Brown, I see you saying that you've been playing this game for a little while and you don't seem to be winning. But I see a chessboard before you, black, black and white pieces on the board. And the white, the black pieces belong to you because it is saying you're saying that um, all the time my movements seem to be seem to be dark, seem to not going anywhere, seem to not winning. I'm not getting, I'm not advancing the way that I should. And the Lord says, I'm not playing against you. I'm playing for you. Hallelujah. God says you're not playing against the devil Jacqueline Brown God says this chess game is between you and him and it is not against but for and so God says to tell you that while you think that you are the one moving your pieces he's moving them for you and so come on grab on to this people of God grab on to this God says I am playing chess not with you but for you Hallelujah. Not sorry, not against you, but for you in this season. And so both of you are sitting across from each other at the table. But Jesus is not trying to beat you in this game. He's trying to let you win. In the same way he came to let us win, free from sin, and have Christ within. Lord, the Lord says, in this final days of this year, 2023, I am causing the chess game to come to an end and you win. You win. And so remember this morning, Jackie, I prophetically declare to you, Jacqueline Brown, and every other person listening to me on the various pl platforms. God says this is a chess game and we're coming down to the end of the game. And know for sure, says God, that you win. Cheryl Graham, you will win in that business place, in that business atmosphere. God says the, 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 the hey come on checkmate 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 i hear god saying checkmate 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 you win you win you win you win come on hallelujah those of you who are having problems in your community problems at your workplace problems in your um in your in your where your business place is the lord says checkmate i am checkmating satan i am checkmating satan on your behalf in this season says the lord and so know that this is the end of the game you win you win so whatever it is that you have been playing in this life whatever moves you've been making and it has not been turning out right you've been losing your men losing your men losing your men god says if you look up you will see that it is he who is playing with you and he wants to leave you with one man the king one man the king one piece the king and if you still have the king you have not lost the opponent has to checkmate your king and take your king in order to win god says i am your king your master moving piece your master declarer hallelujah and so you shall not lose i am your king and no man no demon no devil no witch no warlock can take me I take kings. Kings do not take me, says the Lord. And so I say to you, my people, I say to you, my sons and daughters, know for sure that today you win. Today I move up beside the king of the system of these things, the king of this earth. And I say, you lose. Checkmate. I take you and I give my people the victory. Come on. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Well, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord that Jesus is Lord. Satan's defeated. Hallelujah. Satan's defeated. Hallelujah. Satan's defeated. Hallelujah. Satan's defeated. Hallelujah. So every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. That Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, in your own space, right where you are, just give God thanks. Just say, if you're in your office or if you're in a space where you can't shout out, just under your breath and just in your heart. Just say, Lord, I thank you for the victory. I thank you that I am encouraged this morning. I thank you that I feel your presence. I feel the tingling of your, your presence, the thick, the tingling of your glory. I feel the sense, the presence of your angels around me that has come to bring victory. I feel the presence of the wind. I feel the wind of the wind that has happened in the chess game of my life, in the chess game of my family, in the chess game of my job, of my business, of the chess game of the 
move of your spirit concerning my gifts, talents, and abilities. I declare and decree that there is a shift and there is a win that has taken place. And now there's a celebration. Your book will begin to take off. Your talent in soetry shall begin to take off in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, doors are being opened right now and opportunities are being created. People are going to start seeing you, are going to start requesting you. They won't even know why people who rejected you in the past shall now come to inspect you because you have won. A promotion is coming to you, a move, a shift. Some of you are going to change positions. Some of you positions around you are going to change. People around you are going to change, but some of you are going to change positions. You're going to be moved to new places in the new year, even before this year is out. You're going to be seeing some things happening. Trust God in this season. Come on, elevation, elevation, because victory has been won. When the one king left standing on the chessboard, he gets to make all the decisions. He gets to make all the decisions. And God says, I have made you the last standing king on the chessboard. I have made you the winner, says God. And what you speak, what you declare, what you decree in this season, shall be what is established because the king's word cannot return void the king's word cannot be disobeyed our demons and devils will lose their head are you hearing me god says you come on you lali you lali martin god says you feral you are the one king standing cola cola goodas cola goodas come on Cola Gudas, God says you are the one king piece still standing on the chessboard. Hallelujah. And God says to tell you, come on, Jilly Thames, Jillian. The Lord says, even as you've been discouraged for a while, discouraged for many seasons, today I tell you the truth, my daughter, you are the one king standing and you will overcome. It looks ominous, it looks difficult, it looks like it's not going to work, but God says you are the one king standing and what you speak as of today will be established as law. Come on, people of God, you are kings. What you speak in this season will be established as law. Do not depend on me to speak over you at all times. Speak over yourself by the authority that God has allowed me to release upon you because you are now the one king standing on a chessboard. It means you are a winner. You are the winner. You are victorious. You are the one who is in charge. What will you speak in this season? What will you say? Do not be distracted by the big trees with the lights and the, and the fandangles. Do not be distracted by the gifts, by the bonus. Do not be distracted by the things that are designed to be deceiving or doctrines of devils. But stay steadfast and set your goals, set your sights on what God wants you to do and to be. Because prosperity and good success is not coming to you. It is in you. Come on, this is the word of the Lord. Prosperity and good success is not coming to you. It comes out of you. It comes from you because it is in you. Can I say that one more time just for my own comfort? Prosperity and good success. Most of us as believers have been looking for it. We're looking for it in our jobs. We're looking for it in the business that we're starting. I know my wife is looking for it from her book and from her, her gifts in, and talents in poetry. But God says to tell you prophetically this morning, woman of God, hallelujah. Ivan Hay, God says to tell you, hallelujah. Patricia Taylor, God says to tell you, all of you. Gillian, Kitty's, Kitty's Nurture Cottage, hallelujah. God says to tell you this morning, Lady Goodas, Tasha, Kid Out. God says to tell you this morning that greatness, victory, Prosperity and good success is not coming from the mouth of anyone to you. It is coming from you and out of your mouth. And as you speak it, you shall see it. As you speak it, you shall have it. As you declare it, it shall be established. You must begin to declare it. But declaring it is faith. Then there comes the work. The work must be you cannot be dirty. Remember God said this earlier. You cannot have a dirty vessel doing dirty things and expect that the favor of God will powder you. You have to seek to walk holy and upright. You have to seek to, to, to allow him to wash you so that he can hold you close. 
Hallelujah. Yes, Patricia Taylor, I didn't even know that you were on, woman of God. I didn't even know that you were on today, but the Lord called your name in my head and I had to call your name. God says a shift has come to your life, to your family, to your marriage, everything that concerns you. God says, I am upgrading you in this season. I am lifting you up and I'm strengthening you for there are things that you have struggled with in your mind. There are things that you have struggled with as it relates to what you can do or cannot do. But God says you are the only king. Hallelujah. I feel the heaviness. Patricia, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know anything at all about you except the fact that you are the leader of one of the Women Without Blemish franchise. That's the only thing I know about you, woman of God. I swear to you. But I tell you this morning that God says to tell you that you are the only king left on the board. That means you are the only one with power and authority. God says I've empowered you, woman of God, in this season. And whatsoever you desire to do will get done because what the king wants, the king gets. We are, we are ambassadors. We are king and Jesus is the king of all kings. He has empowered us to speak with authority. He has empowered us to do and to be for his good pleasure. And so the Lord says, you are the only king. Listen to me carefully. I'm speaking specifically to Patricia Taylor now, but I'm speaking to each and every one of you. If you're on TikTok, come on, hear me well. If you're on Facebook, Instagram, hear me well. YouTube, hear me well. Arrows, internet radio, hear me well. I am saying to you right now, God says you are the only king left on the board where are they thank you holy ghost the holy spirit just said to me right now as i said that he says where are your accusers like the woman caught in the act of adultery jesus has bent you over cause you to be looking down at the place where you started and when you look up god says they have pushed you down to a restart but i have washed you and cleansed you and so when you look up you will not see your detractors when you look up you will not see that those things and that thing and those people that have been holding you captive that have been keeping you down god says to ask each of you that are hearing me this morning where are your accusers they're all gone they're in a little container on each side of the board. You are the only one standing and you are the king. The entire landscape is yours. Come on, Patricia Taylor, the landscape is yours. What will you do with it, says the Lord? What will you do with it, says the Lord? Each of you, I'm asking you this question because today God's going to hold you responsible. If you don't want to be held responsible for being the king, jump off the live right now. Jump off the live. If you don't want to be held responsible for the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow, jump off the live. Shut down your phone. Jump off the live. But if you want to be great in God just know that the Lord says because you are on here this morning not because of anything you have done not because of any money you have given not because of any fasting or praying that you have done but God says you have stepped into a portal into a Kairos moment and I God have won the game for you I have made you the lone standing king in this chess game and so God says as you speak now as you move now the entire board is yours you don't have to be concerned about no rook and no pawn and no queen and no other piece on the board getting in your way god says i've cleared the way oh god almighty i'm telling you the presence of god is so rich thank you holy one of israel i bless you as you bless your people thank you for making me a vessel to bless your people the lord says you are the only piece on the chess board today and you are the king hallelujah and so people of God, God says to tell you what you speak as of today is what will come to pass. If you speak negative, if you go look in your bank account and it only has a little bit and you say, Lord, I can't do this for my family. I can't buy no food. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's what will happen. You will go through this holiday season barely hand to mouth eating chicken back instead of oxtail and curry goat and fried, and, and fried chicken and all these kinds of things and ham and whatever it is that you eat you will go through this yuletide season this celebration season this family season just barely getting by but if you say lord i don't see what i want to see but i know that i can be 
who you want me to be. And so I command my as a king, as the man of God says, I'm a king in the earth and king have authority. There is no broke king in the kingdom or in the world. And so I speak now, money come forth, money come forth in the name of Jesus, bonus from heaven, riches in glory manifest in my life in the name of Jesus. My children will eat well this, this, this holiday season the poor my neighbor hallelujah will get a blessing out of my, my 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 house out of my cupboard this season in the name of jesus i shall stand as a king and i shall walk in bling and i shall do a great thing in the mighty name of jesus christ of nazareth come on people of god hallelujah hallelujah so that which you speak i'm telling you again at the sound at the at the risk of being completely repetitive i'm saying it to you again the lord says to tell you that he has established you as a king and there is no one else on the board you are in control anywhere you want to move to in other words anything you want to say and do as the one in authority with no opposition he has moved the voice of the devil he has moved the presence of the devil he who was trying to delay the real or deny you from fulfilling your purpose god says i've moved them all out of your way what will you say what will you do where will you go how will you function now that you are alone with all the power all the authority all the dominion I have done my job. Now it's time for you to do yours. What will you call forth? Come on. Hallelujah. Natalie, I want you to get Dan um, Daniel and David. I want you to get Daniel and David and tell them, say, their good friend, Pastor Wade, says that they, you, the three of you must combine. I'm telling you this prophetically now. I'm giving you a prophetic instruction. I'm saying this to Natalie and her family, but I'm also saying this to you and yours. If you have your family, your husband, come on, K. White, get Mr. White, get Mr. White, hallelujah, Monique, cousin get your daughter to come beside you hold her hand and just begin to declare some things in the atmosphere in in, in in unison as family the bible says where two or more as touching if your family members are not there anyone that you can agree with call someone on the phone and say pastor say as king i must agree and speak a thing and that which concern your family that which concerns you and your prosperity come on get someone to agree with you in your family and just begin to declare come on hallelujah you may have been discouraged in the past but god says if you will carry out this faith act you will see a tremendous move of the glory of god in this season god wants to give you gifts gifts in this season and so he says if you are ready get someone one person two persons three people no matter how many get some persons and hold hand hallelujah carlton is off to work already call um 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 what's her name um destiny somebody get somebody just to hold their hand and to say uh, and you don't have to do it right at this moment but before this morning is out before this morning is out people of god you need to come in agreement with someone and speak some things that has been held up for you call them forth say as king come on remember don't leave out that part God has made you king, therefore you have authority. The atmosphere must know that your authority has been established in the earth and in the heavenlies. Come on. And so you say, as king, I touch and agree concerning X, concerning Y, concerning this. And I call it forth. I call it forth into existence now. I call forth my visa. I call forth my green card. I call forth my victory in the courts. I call forth my victory in the name of Jesus. I call forth my blessing. I call forth forth my investments i call forth uncommon increase come on whatever it is as a king if you call it forth you will see it come to pass in the name of jesus christ in the mighty name of jesus christ come on begin to get on to that and call it forth in the name of jesus remember if if you're not in the presence of someone you can call them on the phone and agree and call it forth in the name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, and, and also though, you must be careful that when you're saying it, you don't say it in the presence of other persons. When you're declaring, don't declare in the presence of other persons. So, 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 Sister K, I don't want to, even if you're agreeing with destiny, just as an example, do not agree in front of everyone else. 
do not agree in front of everyone else this must be done in private in your in with your family and in your space amen but take authority today and watch god in every way you're gonna see miracles before this year is out like never before you're gonna see miracles in especially the first quarter of next year like never before because god is encouraging his people in this season to go forth and to demonstrate glory in the name of jesus christ of nazareth hallelujah amen praise god what a good god Woo! hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus god is a good god hallelujah 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 thank you jesus hallelujah oh man i'm telling you i feel i feel light i feel full i feel how you feel light and full at the same time normally when you feel full you feel heavy hallelujah but i feel light i feel right in the name of jesus christ i feel bright i feel like god is, shine, is shining a new light and change has come change has come we have the victory hallelujah hallelujah thank you jesus what a god we celebrate you lord hallelujah we love you lord and we lift our voice to worship you all our souls rejoice take joy our king in what you hear let it be a sweet sweet sound in your ears hallelujah hallelujah what a god what a mighty god what an awesome god hallelujah hallelujah i'm telling you god is coming with gifts abound because of your faithfulness you guys have been so faithful and god says he has seen he has tasted he has smelt your mm -hmm. faithfulness and your faithfulness has come up to him as an incense and blessings are coming as a result of your faithfulness the philippians faithfully gave to paul and paul says the lord shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory because they were faithful they were not asked they just were faithful and they received uncommon blessing i am here to tell you this morning that as the philippians were blessed according to the riches in glory of the lord jesus christ of nazareth so so each and every one of you and your household shall be blessed but remember this i have to tell you i have to tell you please do not try to put the blessing the, the, the johnson baby powder or the baby talc a blessing upon an unclean body take a wash take a wash in the blood take a wash in the word take a wash of the mind say lord cleanse me from all unrighteousness that i may smell of only your sweet perfume only your sweet powder that i may smell like a rose the rose of sharon as i go forth in my blessing in the name of jesus christ because we do not put powder on dirty bodies i'm begging you shower shower in repentance shower in consistency of thought and mind and watch god do the exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask think or imagine in jesus name amen thank you guys for joining us this morning hallelujah it's time for communion glory to god i hope that you were blessed on this prophetic wednesday hallelujah and as you walk in the fullness of obedience to the word watch god he will do the exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask think or imagine amen hallelujah father we bless you we honor you we adore you we magnify you we thank you for this day that you have made thank you for your word thank you for fighting the fight for us and winning the game for us thank you that you have made us the lone king over the entire landscape the property where the enemy was where other people were oh god almighty we thank you that you have made us the one who dominates, the one who is in control, the one who has authority over all things. And we thank you, Lord, that by your spirit, we will use that authority well so that you might be glorified 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Sanctify and consecrate these emblems even now. May they be to our bodies health and strength, prosperity and good success. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And so as the Lord Jesus Christ took the bread, he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and he said, Eat, this is my body broken for you. As often as you eat of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. You're welcome, Red Fox. Hallelujah. And likewise, he took the cup, he blessed it and took a sup, and he said, drink, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant. As often as you drink of it, you do it in remembrance of me. Drink ye all of it in faith, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Again, I say thank you so much for putting up with me. Thank you so much for believing in the God that is in me and in my household to allow us to be in your household and to, by God's grace, be a blessing to you and to your, your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. Raise your hands for the blessing. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord God Almighty make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Go forth my family and have an amazing day God's way. For our God has already shaken everything that is evil out of your day his way in jesus name remember jesus loves you and we love the world i want to have a fantastic day god's way on behalf of pastor Marsha wade i am ron wade saying bless you remember to do something good for someone today be a blessing in every way that you can give live encourage motivate edify exhort comfort whatever way man just make sure that when persons would have left your presence or when they would have spoken to you even on the phone by email or whatsapp messages ah they would have been blessed for having encountered you because you are a blessing to the people of this world amen hallelujah love you guys bye have a great one you are great <laughs>